In terms of complexity, I think that's something that I think for especially for emerging writers or writers that haven't written for a young audience before, it might be worrying them. They might feel uh, that they will have to dumb down. They'll mm. have to make things more banal, characters more simplistic. Yeah. Um, do you have any um, thoughts on that? Yeah, I think you know. I think try and shut that thought down as early as possible. I think. Um, Audiences are always ahead of the story. Audiences are always working much harder than any writer can work, I, I believe. I think the job of the writer is to try and, you know, get ahead of the audience. I think that same rule, uh, you know, applies to a younger or a, an older audience. I actually think as well that by dumbing down or by simplifying a character, in my experience, the, the stories don't hold up as well. Um, you know, if you can't find at the very least, you know, a reason, a logic, a psychological um, sort of logic to a character's choice, the story doesn't work. Um, I think the fundamentals of telling a story, you know, a person wants a thing, but something is in their way. They have to do something to overcome that obstacle to get what they want. Um, you know, that exists in every, every type of story. And I think just because you are writing for a younger audience does not mean those things go away. Um, my experience as well, certainly of, of European uh, or certainly international sort of work for young audiences is that, you know, huge themes are being tackled, uh, complicated ideas are being tackled. I think that sometimes that idea um, uh, sort of takes over uh, from the actual storytelling. I think that um, the storytelling in, in plays for young people absolutely needs a complexity it needs to be it needs to hold up it's really fascinating when you assemble a group of actors for example and if you're a playwright i would encourage you to you know get your play to a stage a draft that you are happy with and then invite a group of actors in to to read it and what will happen i'm sure nine times out of ten is those actors will provoke you with questions you haven't even considered and those questions will be often um you know why is this character doing this or saying this how do, do they get what they want? What do they want fundamentally? Um, and if you can't answer that in the writing, the play is not complicated enough. And you know, I don't think it's one set of rules um, for a play written for a young audience and another set of rules for a play written for an adult audience. I think a great story um, engages us because we recognize complexity. Um, we are surrounded by that complexity every day and we, I certainly want that complexity on stage or on screen or on the radio. Um, you know, young people make choices every day. Some of those choices perhaps don't appear to follow a logic um, that we recognise, but I think we all, you know, we're all responding to situations. I think, uh, you know, a 12-year-old girl in a, in a situation is able to make sense of that situation and to make a choice for herself. Um, I don't understand why in, in writing a 12 year old character you wouldn't want to explore the reasons that she might make certain choices. Um, so I don't know, I, I, don't, I, don't think, I don't think there's one mode that you switch on when writing for one kind of audience and I think it would be incredibly exciting if you could write a play that held up in front of a young audience and the adults who are in their lives, whether that's their parents, whether that's carers uh, or teachers. I think it would be really exciting actually if you uh, tested your work, not just in front of young people, but what happens when that audience is incredibly diverse in terms of age, in terms of cultural background um, or exposure to theatre. Um, you know, look at those great, I, The Lion, the Witch and the Wardrobe is one of my favourite books. I read it when I was very young and I've pretty much read it every few years since. And that story now, you know, perhaps there are things that I'm discovering in it year after year and time after time that I go back to it. But my first level of engagement was as a really young kid, picking up that book and seeing it as a great story. If I can still engage now as an adult with that story, I think that's because that story has a lot to offer and it's incredibly complicated, but was absolutely written for a young audience. Um, so I would apply that same thought to, to plays, you know, if, I witness this play at the age of 12, what happens if 10 years later I go and watch that play again in a new production, what do I take from it? I think that would be an interesting test. Now that you've uh, talked about The Lion, Witch and the Wardrobe, uh, which amongst other things have been turned into massive Hollywood films, mm -hmm. uh, we're kind of moving on to 
uh, the big productions, the main stage productions, the big uh, the pantos, the, the West End family shows, etc. How do you how do you feel that smaller pieces can kind of hold up in, in that competition with somebody who can you know wow an audience with amazing theatrical uh, magic and, and and sheer size? Well, the most magical thing about theatre is not the scale or the technical wizardry of projection or sound or light. It's never been the thing for me. The most wonderful thing, the most theatrical thing, is a human being on a stage or in a space talking and sharing with a, a, you know, an audience, however large that is. So fundamentally for me, those huge shows on large stages, you know, the Matildas in this country, for example, an adaptation from Roald Dahl's book, they are wonderful, spectacular, theatrical, you know, productions, and and it's a beautiful, wonderful show. Um, I don't think that's in competition with a, you know, a, a play in a venue for ninety people with a solo performer. Um, I think those two things exist as part of a, you know, a much wider, much more engaged context. We're very lucky here in the UK, and in a city like London, there is so much choice available to us. There are so many you know, dedicated theatres for a certain kind of work, whether that be new plays, whether that be work for young audiences, whether that be work for um, specific communities. Um, and so I, I think as a playwright, and you're often told, regardless of what you're writing, you know, don't go off and write the 20 actor, three and a half hour epic first, because there are very few theatres who can produce it. I would say write the play, but just be realistic and, and understand that there's probably a journey that play will go on. But you know, at the very root of, of theatre making for me, and uh, you know, and, and writing plays for the theatre, is that, you know you are telling a story live. You are you are writing text that will be spoken by an actor in front of a room of people, and so I am always looking for that simplicity. I'm always looking for that simplicity. You know, if it if it needs projection, light, sound, a cast of five hundred then I start asking questions of why it needs that, you know, what are those things supporting? So I would say, you know, the hardest thing, the hardest play to write sometimes is the two character play that's 50 minutes long or five minutes long even, um, because you've got to cause a story to happen, you've got to engage an audience immediately, you've got to hold them, uh, you've got to present a dilemma, you've got to provoke um, emotion and, and hopefully provoke their imaginations at the same time. So. You know, I would say learn from the Matildas or learn from those huge spectacular shows, go to pantomime and work out why, you know, young people are so happy to engage and so, uh, you know, so entertained by that work and then distill that and, and what is that about? And that's about recognising a character, you know, pantomimes work brilliantly because, you know, we very quickly get introduced to a character. Here's the goodie, here's the baddie, here's uh, the love interest, here's the kind of villain. We, we absolutely recognise those stock characters effectively. And, and so when we're in that quickly and we are, you know, we are trained through that play that um, this person is going to creep up on this person at one point and it's our job to let that person know, we just get it. We're straight into the heart of what we want to, what we're expected to do. And I think that audience expectation can sometimes be forgotten when you're writing plays. I think you have to sit down when you're writing and just remind yourself that this work is going in front of a room full of people night after night. Um, and that room full of people are up for it. You know, they've, they've bought their ticket and they want to be there and they want to be entertained, they want to be provoked, they want to engage. Um, so I would beg, borrow and steal from the big shows, but realize that you can also do a lot with very few performers in a tiny little space, uh, in a basement, uh, in a small town. Um, and for that audience on that night, if, you're, if your play, if the story at the heart of your play um, you know, is, is, is exciting, they will remember that experience for as long as any kid who's taken to see Matilda on the West End in London. Um, so yeah, I, I don't know, I don't think those two things exclude each other, I think they exist in a really healthy relationship to each other. All right. Thank you very much, Rob. Thanks, Austin. Thank That's wonderful.